Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu to some of you and peace to the rest of you. This is Blackheart signing Black in again, asking you to hit that share button <clears throat> even before you hit the like or the subscribe button because the share button is how uh, information spreads and that's how more people benefit from uh, what can help them out, Lord willing. Look, let me give it to y'all. Um, straight and direct no chaser because i'm just not really good at, at building up to things and it's much easier for me uh and i always take the easy way out unless it's wrong it's easier for me to just go ahead and give you all the real deal uh right off the bat and and the subject right off the bat this is what's going on what is it that i will forgive and sisters and what is it that i will not forgive and sisters well uh, the thing for which I would forgive, sisters, is the preferences. And you see, there are two trends that changed when it came to black women's preferences in my lifetime that I'm aware of. Um, when it was about 1989, and uh, I was uh, between sixth and seventh grade that summer. And so uh, it was actually that summer vacation over which the trend shifted where I lived. So after hearing in fifth and sixth grade that I had this unfair advantage with black women because of my uh, non-tropical African phenotype, in other words, uh, I was a yellow nigga with so-called good hair. Uh, by the end of that summer break and vacation, I was now uh, at an unfair disadvantage. But I wasn't told. I, I was never given the memo at that point. So I knew that I was at an unfair disadvantage, but I was always led to think that it was just me. It was just person. It was just something I was doing wrong. When, in fact, the other things that I was told uh, to attribute it to um, really didn't matter because, again, the phenotype was wrong and they couldn't be seen out in public with this phenotype. And I looking back on it, I understand it. This is not anything wrong for me to even forgive them for in the first place. It seemed to me that if uh, sisters were fighting white supremacy with the womb, it's OK. And by the time I was outright told that that's exactly what the hell it was, it was 1995. And uh, I was coming up on my sixth year of trying to uh, build my romantic life, therefore set the tone for my future family life with a black woman. I was coming up on my sixth year of failing at it, thinking that it was just me uh, for about the first maybe three years and then coming to realize that it wasn't really me, but it was what they thought I was still not knowing that what they thought I was was based on stereotypes that surround um, complexion and hair texture. For all of that confusion, when I was finally told what it was back in 1995, uh, and it, in the form of a joke, I thought, well, it doesn't mean that they hate me, because that's not how it was presented. I still... Um, didn't really mind if that was the case because at the end of the day they were breeding themselves and I actually internalized that. I was like, okay, they're breeding now, sisters are shifting. They're trying to breed our people to go back to our more original form and I was happy with that actually, despite the fact that it meant that I was not what they would want. Although I pretty much figured at that point that, um, that it was a joke Later on, I came to realize in 2001 how serious it was when some lady colleagues of mine told me that it was actually more serious than what I thought, <laughs> that it meant uh, that I was, uh, that was the reason I was being chased by married women, women in committed relationships, women in high school when I was in college, women in high school when I was done with college, uh, women with kids women with bad credit, uh, no money, pretty much women in really bad situations, but never women in enviable situations. And it was explained to me. 
I still, when I realized how serious it was, I said, well, okay. So they're serious about going against white supremacy with the wounds. I'm fine with that. But the fact that they actually did prefer me sometimes and other times not, but still acted like they didn't, I'm not fine with that. I'm not fine with pretty much being told that I'm going to have to settle for less because of it. Now that I'm not fine with. But I didn't hold a grudge. I forgave that presumption on the part of a lot of sisters. The next trend that changed, though, was a bit the opposite. You see, when sisters began to uh, show a preference for the more original looking brothers, I saw it before I heard about it, but I didn't know fully what I was seeing because I was still hearing that I had this unfair advantage. <laughs> but when the second shift happened, I guess it may have, I was fully aware of it by 2017. I heard about it this time before I saw it. So when I saw it, I knew exactly what I was seeing. African-American women were starting to swirl. I'm not forgiving that. It is okay to look at me personally and say he's just not black enough. We want real black men. We want to propagate. We want to continue the race as God made us fine. But this thing of deciding that you won't drop all your standards because of the oppressor of black people and, what, and, and all that they have acquired and amassed by oppressing black people. In other words, you jumping from black men straight to D white man and not even other men of color or uh, exotic looking brothers, that's hypocrisy. And I'm not forgiving that. I'm also not forgiving Western women in general, white and black alike, American or non-American, but Western women in general for lying about what they wanted. Not every woman did it. I know the fact that so many of them did lie about this to young men and put young men on the wrong track is enough to not forgive. But I'm not going to forgive Western black women, mostly African-American specifically, for the damn hypocrisy. If I ain't dark enough, fine. If my hair is not original enough, fine. But how dare you turn around and then lower standards after the hell you put brothers through, lower your standards because a man is white. That's race trade. Uh, that, yeah, that's race treachery right there. <laughs> I mean, either you like white men or you don't. It's just like when anybody else, either you like tall men or you don't, either you like short men or you don't, either you like yellow brothers or you don't. So after all this, you don't like yellow brothers because they remind you of the white man and, they, and they're weaker and they're pussy. After all of this shit, you turn around and run after an outright white dude. A brother's got to be six feet tall, jet black, bald headed, very athletic. And for you to not cheat on him, he has to tick every box. He has to be wealthy and muscular. For you to, for you to be with him and only him, he pretty much has to be a professional athlete. And even then, when you get bored, you're going to take him through the courts and divorce rape him. Just like the white bitch going to do to her man. But when it comes to that white dude, oh man, you drop all standards. He can have... I mean, Serena proved that a white dude can have no athletic ability, be of normal height, and have a, 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 even though he's wealthy, they're both wealthy, he can have a tenth of her wealth, and they get together. No, I'm sorry, a sixth of her wealth, and, and they get together. But, And she'll probably have the baby and everything. Hell, she'll even give him some pussy against her own religious beliefs before they get married and have his baby. Get pregnant before they married. <laughs> That's fine. That's okay. I mean, look, let me explain this to you. That's a slap in the face to black men. We're not slapping you in the face when we get passports and go to other countries. Most of us are going and getting black women from other countries. Let me tell you, sister, something else about this, though, too. Since only last weekend... Uh, did brothers with passports become outright pedophiles? 
Let me explain something to you, sisters. <laughs> because you are hypergamous, which is in your nature, and that's not necessarily wrong, but you are hypergamous, you are now accusing men, black men, from America who you don't want of being hypogamous, pretty much stooping down to unacceptable levels to find somebody, failing to understand that these brothers have already been shown and told by you in their youth that that's what it would take for them to get one of you. Yeah, well, she's a third world woman. Yeah, well, she's so much younger than you, which actually doesn't happen that often. <laughs> yeah, well, she's... Uh, See, you'll sit up and say that, that it, it's a clear-cut case of hypergamy with a wider gap in between his station and hers in life, failing to remember that when you were young, you insisted that if a man, if a black man was not uh, in the top uh, single-digit percentile for height and wealth and muscles and social status, if he was a normal black man, you had to be below the age of consent and he had to be above the age of consent to make up for it. Why? Because you were excited by the prospect of him going to jail behind your pussy. A lot of you were like that. You were underage, but you were old enough to know what you were doing. And you only wanted men that were above the age of consent when you were underneath it. Unless, of course, he could be under the age of consent, but we already know what he would have had to be. And that was, again, that would have been like the top 10% of men, or the luckiest 10% of men, I should say. <laughs> but I can't even say the top because it's not the skills for which they want them. There's, there's nothing that they have control over for which you wanted those guys that were underneath the age of consent. No, it was things that had to do with nothing more than, uh, nothing other than luck. <laughs> While you were saying that you wanted men uh, based on, and then you go down a list of things that they actually had control over. Now, all of a sudden, brothers is pedophiles this last weekend because Super Sly said so, and he got it from some sister, some mystery bitch, I don't know, <laughs> talking about the age of consent for different countries. But the age of consent being low does not mean that's why brothers are going. So let me tell you one of the reasons why it is that some of these women like brothers more than they even like white guys. It's simple. <laughs> See, like one of the commentators on uh, my, my own video, my last video said uh, and I want to give a shout out to him by name if I can. But one of the commentators on my last video said that if you were a senior in high school when he was coming up, you were a senior in high school. You caught hell socially from other brothers because you were dating a 15 year old if you dated someone that young. I knew a guy in 12th grade and he caught hell from a few, well, I shouldn't say hell, but he caught something from a few people and guess why he caught it? He caught hell from a few people because he was dating a woman that was, or dating a girl that was in eighth grade and he was a, a senior in high school. The eighth grade and the middle school were in the same building. And one of the things uh, that someone had to say to one of the teachers was, at the end of the day, she's chasing him. And the sister's like, yeah, but he's old enough to know better. And I sided with the teacher in this regard. But I did have to say the fact remains that we're going to have to change our standards as well. Because see, if you are a man. If you were a high school man and you're single by yourself, then you get clowned the way I got clowned, even suspected of things you didn't do the way I got suspected of things I didn't do. But there are times when in order to not be single, you have to settle for someone that's inappropriately younger than you. Why? Because of sisters. It was Abdullah bin Bobby Atayib. Shout out to him. He brought that up. I knew it, but he vo he vocalized it. He he uh, articulated it in writing. If you are black, you are discouraged from dating women that are too much younger than yourself. That's what goes on. That's real. These American brothers that are getting passports and going abroad, you hypocrite bitches.
are not doing it in order to exploit underage. It, now, just because there is somewhere a black man with a U.S. passport who exists that might be doing this stuff because he got it from them sick-ass crackers doesn't mean that that's what black men are going for. And let me tell you another trend that happened. Back in 1998, I remember in 1998, somebody wrote in uh, the, the, my college's newspaper. My college is a black college. A guy wrote in my college's newspaper that if black men go to Brazil, that they're going to find women that are nice and honest and want a good man and are not looking for thugs. They're not looking for guys with thug energy. They're not looking for shotters. They're not looking for bad boys, ragamuffins, none of that. And you can go to Brazil and you can find them just like with African-American women. You'll find them of all phenotypes. He did not glorify the mixed look over the African look. He did not glorify the completely African. And even that is a, a very wide range of appearances. But he did not glorify the specifically Congolese or West African look over the so-called mixed look or the East African look or the North African look. He simply said African-American brothers got options in Brazil because the women are not socialized the same way that African-American women are socialized. This is back in 1998. There was an internet at that point. It's just that at that point, the internet was not in as wide of a use as it is now. Social media was non-existent. So you didn't really get to take this kind of conversation mainstream into black culture. But it, this was known. This is 1998. And guess what wound up happening later? Some of these brothers from Atlanta that went to my college or other colleges, they started going. And finding out it is true. If you're looking to pay to play, then you pay, but you will play. If you're looking for a girlfriend, you treat her right, she'll treat you right. You're looking for a wife, you marry her, she'll treat you like a husband. It's better than dealing with the black American bitch. And that's how they described it, not the way I was describing it at that time. I remember that. <laughs> Let me tell you something else too. You hypocrite bitches. And I'm not talking about the ones who were innocent. So if you're innocent of this hypocrisy, don't take offense. Just do yourself a favor. Don't start to defend the guilty bitches because then you'll become one. All you got to do is just not take offense. You ain't part of the problem. You're actually a victim yourself because you wind up losing out on good men because the guilty bitches are running them off. So if you're innocent of this, sister, I'm on your side, believe it or not. I'm, I'll probably never meet you. It's too late for me to marry you anyway, but I'm on your side where that is concerned. But I want the guilty bitches to understand that this trend of brothers leaving African America, black America, to find their woman, or, or at least looking outside of it, is an old trend. Back in 1997 and 98, I had some of my college schoolmates telling me, man, black, you learning the Ethiopian language down at their church? Word? Man, you need to get me a, a, a Ethiopian girlfriend, bro. I was like, I can't find somebody else a girlfriend. I can't do it. <laughs> I don't know how. How am I going to convince a woman to date somebody else? How's that going to work? Sisters ain't into me. And I, by extension, I assumed that Ethiopian women weren't going to be interested either. Or if they were, they just couldn't admit it because of the culture. I assumed that. So if some of you want to say, well, come on, Blackheart, why didn't you get with one of them? Well, the reason is because of what sisters did not want. And by this point, I knew the jokes about light-skinned brothers being out of style. <laughs> I assumed that, I, that, that from the continent, they would not be interested or if they were they couldn't show it because of the culture and in large part it turned out I was right not only that but because of the mistreatment I'd been through at the hands of sisters I knew that I needed some sort of uh, I knew I needed a few different experiences before I could jump to women from the continent and I wasn't gonna get it so I kind of suspected that I might have been damaged goods at that point I suspected that much turns out I was I was damaged goods I wasn't the only one. It wasn't just me. Some of these brothers asking me this. They were damaged goods. And these were brothers that were select or non-select. They were bad boy, rude boy, ragamuffin. And they were straight laced and square and everything in between. Most were somewhere in between. They weren't pushovers. They weren't punks. And they weren't out there super aggressive shooting up the club at night either. Somewhere in between and they were normal. 
But you hypocrite bitches want to sit up here and make it look like everybody that you don't want is a failure. So when they get a passport and go elsewhere where the good things about them are appreciated, then you want to sit up here and make it seem like they're pedophiles. You, the truth is that if they were, and lastly, before I conclude this, let me explain that these charges of, uh, or these accusations of, of pedophilia for a particular traveling demographic where there's never been any evidence of it uh, are easily refuted. I've already stated that in the culture, uh, this is not tolerated. So the other thing, too, is this. If this was really the case, then you'd have a lot of brothers in third world jails and prisons facing charges of this or having been convicted of it. <laughs> Eventually, at some point, and this, like I said, this trend of, of going abroad this is more than two decades old. So if this actually was the case, then you'd have brothers in these uh, jails and prisons probably having faced some death penalties already, uh, having already been executed. So it does, the evidence doesn't stack up. And eventually, after enough were facing uh, long sentences or death penalties in third world prisons, Many of them would have thought about it and decided, well, you know what? If we're going to have to go to these prisons, let's go to first world nations like the Scandinavian countries, do this dirt. And in that way, if we get caught, we get uh, sentenced to time in these nice, uh, cushy Scandinavian joints. But the reason that this is not the case is because that traveling demographic is not based on that for which you have accused them, super sly. You and whoever paid you to uh, say that thing you said. Or even worse, got you to say it without even paying you anything. Now that would really be bad. But um, you don't see this type of thing. I mean, the only brother we know in the Scandinavian jail was ASAP Rocky who got released. And that had to do with something completely unrelated to anything that low. Hell, he didn't even have to. Ha there was not even a, a moral misbehavior on his part. We saw the footage and he still got arrested. So you got to stop and think about if you really want to sit up here and spend all your time blaming uh, a demographic, your own demographic of men, for that matter, for something very low down and heinous and unspeakable in any culture or any society, simply because they're not willing to stay stay put, so to speak, and chase you down. You got to stop and think, do you really want to sit up here and blame a whole bunch of people for that, just for that reason by itself? Do you really want to be that childish? Anyway, signing black out. I hope this has been a benefit. Assalamu alaikum.